Hello and welcome to the look ahead for Tuesday the 9th of July with me Fiona Sincosa, Senior Market Analyst at City Index. So tomorrow the economic calendar is relatively quiet but we do have a key uh, event tomorrow and that will be Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell testifying before the Senate Banking Committee. Do also have overnight the Australian Westpac Consumer Confidence Data. Um, now really just let's focus on Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell and what we're expecting is most likely um, to reiterate um, that policymakers need to see more evidence of inflation cooling back towards the central bank's 2% target before feeling confident enough to cut interest rates. Now, his comments are going to come even after data last week showed that the UK economy, the US economy appears to be slowing and the labour market as well. Unemployment has risen to a its highest level since 2021. We also saw the ISM services PMI contract sharply. Um, so just with this in mind, let's take a look at some charts. Now, this is a really interesting one. This is the Aussie dollar, US dollar um, that we're looking at here. Now, it's just been breaking out of this trend that it had been sort of this um, holding pattern that it had been trading in since early May. And we're seeing this breakout here. And this is basically on the idea of diverging RBA Fed expectations. So the market is um, still relatively hawkish as far as the RBA is concerned. And that is after the RBA said at their latest meeting that they actually could still um, consider hiking rates if the data showed that it was necessary. We've still got signs of sticky inflation over in Australia. And that's in contrast to the US now where we're seeing sort of signs of the economy cooling and the Federal Reserve, or the market at least, expecting the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates potentially as soon as September now. So, you know, if we do find, I think that um, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell could be pressed by lawmakers as to why the Fed aren't moving sooner, we do hear a slightly more dovish sounding Powell, then we could find that this um, Aussie dollar, US dollar extends gains up to that 0.68 level. That's good, the level I'll be looking for on the upside. On the downside, we're seeing this support level here at 0.67. So other um, currencies that are just gonna be watching, I think sterling US dollar is another really interesting chart right now. Obviously, there's no data from the UK due tomorrow, but the market is still processing the change of government which appears to be going down well as far as the pound is concerned and the pledge of um, sort of stability uh, for the UK and optimism surrounding growth has lifted the pound again above a couple of key levels here. So firstly, above this falling trend line, um, which dates right the way back to summer 2023, so about a year long, and also above the 128 level as we're heading towards here, which is just basically um, below the 129 level, which is the 2024 high. Um, so, but if we do find that for whatever reason, we get a slightly more hawkish sounding pal, who's more cautious, um, and let's not forget, we also have US CPI later this week, but that's expected to show that inflation is continuing to cool. But if for whatever reason, we start to hear a more cautious sounding pal, then on the downside, as I said, 128 and is, is the levels we're watching, 127.70 is the falling trend line. Um, and then you've got this level here, which is 127. So I think the other one to be watching just whenever we're talking about foul, uh, Powell and um, the interest rate expectations for the US is gold, which is another one which looks like it could be on the verge of a breakout. So if we get a dovish sounding Powell, then that could be um, sort of beneficial for gold, which is non-yielding, so benefits in a low uh, interest rate environment. We've already seen it rise above this falling trend line, which dates back from the all-time high. And it's just testing this level here, which is around the 123.80, 88 level, which is the high that we saw in June. It's also a level that was quite important back in April. So we get a break above here, then I'll be looking for a rise back up towards that 2450 level. On the downside support can be seen around 2325, and that's the falling trend line support. Below that, we've not really got too much until the 2300 and 2280. 
So I hope you like what you've seen today. And if you do, then please do give this video a like. And if you'd like to receive more videos like this, then please do subscribe.